You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Is your pet stressed out? Does your pet need annual vaccines? Which pet is best for a child? Would you know if your dog was in pain? Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor, where you'll learn everything about keeping your pet healthy and happy. From pet care, pet meds and grooming, to pet food, pet insurance and dental care, this is the place to find out everything there is to know about pet wellness. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets because it's your pet. Health matters. Please welcome your pet doctor host, veterinary media consultant and veterinarian, Dr. Bernadine Cruz. I recently saw a new client with a petite little kitten he adopted several months ago from a shelter. Since cats are like potato chips and you can't have just one, he adopted her brother as well. Now, in a little over a month, he's going to have a litter of kittens cavorting through his house. Yes, she's pregnant. Yes, she is very young. And yes, her brother is the father. I'll be speaking today with Esther Meckler, the founder of Spay USA, and Dr. Richard Speck of the Animal Protective League of Springfield, Illinois, about early spay and neuter program and beat the heat. We'll be right back. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly, right after these messages. Every pet is unique. Maybe they're gray in the muzzle, yet young at heart. Maybe they're growing out of the puppy stage and into their paws and ears. Or maybe they're just trying to maintain a more girlish figure. At PetSmart, we have the right food for your pet at a great value for you. PetSmart. Be better together. Go to PetSmartDeal.com and save up to 30% on possum gifts for the pets and pet people in your life. Toys, collars, leashes, PetSmart gift cards, treats, and more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com today. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. X-Power is a global brand that offers a complete line of stand dryers, cage dryers, and multiple blasters that cater to both home and professional groomers. Designed to be quiet, lightweight, and powerful, X-Power pet dryers will save you time, energy, and money. The X-Power B2 Pro at Home Dryer is the perfect gift for family and friends. Please check out our specials at ViperPet.com and Amazon.com. For more information, visit xpower.ws or call 855-855-8868. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio with Dr. Bernadine Cruz. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. Thank you both very much for being with us today. This is such a critical issue. Esther, are you there? Oh, I'm there, yes. Okay. And Dr. Speck, how about you? Yes. Perfect. Dr. Speck, I'll first throw this over to you. With you being with the Animal Protective League, you are seeing situations like this all too common. I had to laugh a little bit, but understandably that this owner that I was intimating, he had no idea that, oh my goodness, a brother and a sister kitty would mate. Do you hear stories like that also? Well, of course. So you hear stories like this. What is your feeling about early spay and neuter? How early is early? We also do a spay and neuter clinic here. Uh-huh. So we, we routinely spay animals at six and eight weeks of age. Now, some people would say, oh, my goodness, these are such itty-bitty babies. There's no way they can get pregnant. Why are you doing it at such a young age? Well, the goal is to get them spayed before their first heat because we all know pregnancy follows shortly after. So that we're finding, because of the statistics that spay neuter clinics keep, that dogs and cats can come into heat sooner than six months. A lot of those dogs and cats come in for surgery with us. They're already in heat. So we need to, to move that date back by about a month because they rarely come into heat before five months. So it's a great idea, these itty-bitty babies coming in. And oftentimes, I'll tell people when they are surprised of early spay and neuter being recommended, is that, okay, the typical woman will be having her first period when she's maybe in sixth or seventh grade. 
But there are some children, some young girls, who as early as 12 years of age can become pregnant. So it's not the norm, but it is possible. Esther, I know that you are the founder of Spay USA. What is that? That is a toll-free hotline that covers the whole United States uh, where people can call in to get information about their nearest affordable spay-neuter clinic or service or program. And we started that in 1990 because so many people couldn't afford uh, the regular fees the vets were charging in some places. And uh, we knew that it was really important to stop that flow into the shelters. So we set that up so that people could call us for for help and advice and guidance about where to take their pets. Perfect. It's, it's a great service that you're offering. And Dr. Speck, going to you, when clients will sometimes come to me and say, you know, boy, it's just so expensive. I really want to have my dog or cat spayed, neutered, but I just can't afford this. How do I find somebody that's inexpensive and how do I know that they're good? What's your counsel in finding somebody who's going to do the best job? Because surgeries can vary from facility to facility. How do you find somebody good? What questions should they ask? My thoughts are, if I'm going to have a procedure done on myself, I want the person who does you know, 50 to 100 of these a day versus the person that maybe does one or two a week. So I think the spay neuter clinics are a logical place to have your pet spayed or neutered, you know, especially if the money situation is a factor. And there are spay neuter clinics now um, all over the country. We started here in um, Wilton in 2006, and we were like just a handful of the um, nonprofit spay neuter clinics at the time, but now there are nearly 100 of them. So they are available, and, um, and you know, we have protocols that we follow, and, you know, everything is is researched and and I'm very very happy. I was in private practice for 25 years and I'm I'm just extremely happy and and confident with high volume spay neuter and the way it's done in spay neuter clinics. And I might add one more thing. I used to think that the overpopulation was driven by um, the old dog and the old cat that just had litter after litter. But what we we're finding out is that four out of five litters now are born to dogs and cats that are eventually spayed, but just not before they had that first litter. At first, um, what's called accidental litter. So people are doing the right thing and getting their animals paid, but they're just not doing it soon enough. And, you know, you, you just can't imagine that a puppy or a kitten six months of age can come into heat and become pregnant. But um, I'm telling you, it happens all the time. So it's just a way to, if we spay in five months, we're going to avoid that first heat period, and that's the goal. I was reading that it's estimated that about 50% of all pets are born of, oops, accidents. So yes, that really goes along, Dr. Speck, with what you're saying. And too many times people come in going, oh, I just want my children to see that joy of birth, you know, to see that litter of puppies or kittens being born. And once it has that litter, I'm going to get it spayed. So I agree with you. That is an all too common scenario. And my usual response to them is, number one, it seems like that litter is typically born in the middle of the night when the kids are asleep, so they didn't get to see it. Or two, they go, ooh, and the kids run the other way because they don't want to watch. But it's not even so much finding appropriate homes for your litter's puppy or kittens, but then you have to start thinking about their puppies and kittens. Esther, do you have any kind of feeling for, okay, a dog or a kitten having a litter as you project it out into the future? How many animals that can relate to? What does it result in? It is a huge number. In theory, it's beyond the tens of thousands, but in reality, it's just enough that the shelters are overflowing. And basically, even your first litter, that first one, is going to take up homes that would otherwise perhaps be given to animals that are in shelters. In other words, if those six kittens that are produced are six good homes that are going to be taken that won't go to shelter animals. So the impact starts right away, but it's true. You, you have a litter of six, and then they're each capable of either having or producing six more within a year. We used to get calls at Spay USA where people said, someone dropped a cat at my house last year, and now there are 24. Because that cat of the litter, and then they intermingled, as you said in your introductory phrase about the litter mates that litter. So it's phenomenal. People are always amazed how quickly they do multiply. And a lot of times they can't get home for one or two, and uh, then they start procreating as well. So 
just by starting early and staying before the fifth month, before the first heat, just prevent a whole lot of heartache. And Esther, I agree with you, and Dr. Speck mentioned also that, yes, just because they're relatives doesn't mean they're not going to breed. This particular sneaky little kitty, the owner didn't see any signs of the cat being in heat, didn't notice them breeding at all. So I said, it probably is like that you know, poor teenage girl who goes out and fools around one time, and poof, she gets pregnant. So here is the situation with this kitten. So it happens. We have a little poster Mm -hmm. that we put out called Litter Mates Can Litter. And I think that's a good little phrase to put out there for people. I don't usually see that up in the shelters, but they should have a sign when they do it. And they should encourage adoptions of two kittens, but they should also let the the adopters know that litter mates can litter. I, I don't think a lot of people realize that. And they don't. You know, when hormones get the best of you, you don't care who it is. You just need love. And if it happens to be from a relative, okay, fine. They are just animals. Dr. Speck, speaking of animals, is it dangerous for such a young pet to be put under anesthesia? I know that's a real concern. People always ask, oh, but it's so young. Isn't that dangerous? You know, in years past, you know, the reason that the age was six months or older to spay um, dogs or cats is the anesthetics weren't as safe as they are now. So um, the veterinarians wanted to let the animals get larger, and then it would be a safer trip under anesthesia, but the anesthetics are so safe right now that that's really not an issue. And the younger these animals are, there's fewer surgical complications. The recovery time is shortened and the surgery is easier. So there just is no no medical reason or even psychological reason with pets anymore not to spay them. Um, at least shorten the six-month spay down to five months. It is amazing to see, Dr. Speck, how quickly they do recover from these procedures. I'll oftentimes tell people that several years ago, I had some lady surgery myself. And when we see these dogs and cats leaving the same day after they've been neutered, they're just wagging their tail and they're happy and they're purring and everything is wonderful. And I remember when I was discharged from the hospital, I was not purring for quite a long time. So they recover very quickly. Are there some downsides, some concerns that people need to have about these young kittens and puppies going under anesthesia or surgery in general? Not really. They are, the young animals are just fine. The only thing that the veterinarian has to be cognizant of is we need to, sometimes these animals, for one thing, they shouldn't be um, have food and water withheld because they, they run out of glucose very quickly. So we give all of our young animals a little shot of uh, corn syrup or something under their tongue apply some of that and then we have to keep them good and warm because of their small body size but when you take those things into consideration the, for me it's really it's really fun to see a young animal that we do surgery on because when they go down quickly they bounce back quickly and 10 15 minutes after surgery they're up on something to eat so it's really been fun for me having been you know on the other end of the of the veterinary world because I was in private practice for so long before I did this and I would encourage, um, you know, we have people come in. If anyone has any questions or concerns about spaying at a young age, we, we have them come in. They're welcome to come in. We'll let them watch a surgery. And we like to keep the litters together. If we have a litter of puppies come in, we do everything to the puppies together. They go under anesthesia at the same time in the same cage, and then they recover together on, you know, in the same area so that they're not stressed because that's very important. They're at an area in their a time in their life when, they need kindness, and they need to be handled gently, and that's what spay and neuter clinics do. You're giving us such a marvelous perspective, Dr. Speck, because I think too many people, and probably even some private practice veterinarians think, oh yeah, you know, they're going into one of these low-cost spay and neuter facilities, it's probably going to be backroom medicine, and they're not going to be concerned about the general welfare. They're just trying to make money. They're just trying to spay these animals. And I'm hearing this love and compassion in your voice. It's like, yes, this is the whole reason for doing this. And you're thinking about the entire animal, its physical well-being, as well as its mental well-being. This is very refreshing. Well, see, we're a nonprofit, so the money fee for us is not the driving factor. Everybody that, that's in a nonprofit that works in a nonprofit is there because they have a love for animals. And so we have, you know, we have a really good caring staff and we we do the best we can for every animal. And also, um, the high-volume spay-neuter clinics now, you know, we have our anesthetic protocol is 
updated by a board certified anesthesiologist every year and you know we're in, in touch nationally with with other groups to try to get the newest techniques and the, and the newest and safest methods including changes in anesthesia or in how we monitor the animals all the animals are monitored while they're under anesthesia and um, to me it's, it's been eye-opening and I'm very proud of what we do and you should be. And I think it is important when people are listening to this, they're hearing that, okay, there is up-to-date anesthetic protocols. When they're seeking out spay and neuter facilities, they need to ask those questions. What type of anesthesia, what type of monitoring, what type of pain medication is being used? Because it is important just because they're little doesn't mean they don't feel pain. So those are all questions to ask. Esther, Meckler, question for you. When people are calling and they're asking for somebody close to them, what type of vetting does Spay USA do to find a facility close to these people? What do you do? Well, now, I have to mention that I have retired from Spay USA, so I'm no longer overseeing that program. But what I have been working with is state programs. In 30 of the 50 states, there is a program like Spay Colorado, Spay Iowa, Spay Illinois. Uh, you can probably Google the names of these uh, statewide programs that also have a toll-free hotline. And basically what they do is they work with humane societies, rescue groups, and the private veterinarians around their own states, and they also vet the vets, so to speak. They check the vets and make sure that these are reputable veterinarians. What we did, if there was ever a complaint, we looked into it, and if there were two complaints, we dropped them from the list. So we kept an eye on the veterinarians, but I was very pleased. I worried when I first started Spay USA that there might be difficulties in that department, but we never ran into that. We really, the veterinarians that we worked with were of the caliber of Dr. Speck. They really cared about the animals. That's why they were doing the spay and That's why they signed up to be part of the either the state spay program or Spay USA. Well, I hope we don't drop anyone right now as we stop for a short little message. We're going to be right back with Esther Meckler of Spay USA and Dr. Richard Speck of Animal Protective League of Springfield, Illinois. We're going to be right back about Beat the Heat. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly, right after these messages. Every pet is unique. Maybe they're gray in the muzzle, yet young at heart. Maybe they're growing out of the puppy stage and into their paws and ears. Or maybe they're just trying to maintain a more girlish figure. At PetSmart, we have the right food for your pet at a great value for you. PetSmart. Be better together. Go to PetSmartDeal.com and save up to 30% on awesome gifts for the pets and pet people in your life. Toys, collars, leashes, PetSmart gift cards, treats, and more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com today. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. Dyson. The new Dyson Animal Backs are powerful bagless upright backings for homes with pets. Air muscle and radio root cyclone technology generates the strongest suction power to powerfully remove dust, dirt, and pet hair from the home or car. To order your Dyson Animal Vac, go to DysonDeals.com. DysonDeals.com to order your Dyson Animal Vac today. Dyson. Music to your ears. This year, Americans are expected to spend a jaw-dropping $36 billion on their pets. From lighted leashes to high-end spa products, the discriminating pet owner can find just about anything to pamper his or her pet. Hi, this is Michelle Fern. Join me every week for Best Bets for Pets, where we'll talk about the latest pet products and talk to the companies that make them. Best Bets for Pets, every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Pet Welcome back to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio with Dr. Bernadine Cruz. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. Thank you both again very much. I think right now I'd like to maybe debunk some of the 
myths around a pet being spayed or neutered. And number one, Dr. Speck, with regard to neuter, it's the same for cats or dogs and neutering is just generic. How do you describe exactly what is done when a pet is spayed or castrated, the more appropriate word for a male? What's the procedure? Well, the procedure is, of course, they all go under general anesthesia. They're given some sedatives and some pain medication prior to the surgery, so that's on board. And then uh, for a female, um, we take the um, both of the ovaries and the uterus. And so, you know, you want to you don't want the animal to become pregnant later in life, but you also don't want the animal to come in heat, because you know one of the benefits of spaying and neutering is that you're removing those bad behaviors of pets that get them into trouble. And the, the, the biggest reason that animals are relinquished to shelters are behavioral, like aggression, roaming, fighting, mounting, those type of conditions, urine marking. And if you can span before they are sexually mature, and that's you know another thing that the spaying at five months will do for you, you eliminate those behaviors. With a male dog, you're removing... Um, on both of the testicles. Now, so you're not are, doing just a vasectomy? No, that can be done. And there are places in the country where people, for one, owners for one reason or another, don't want their dog not to have testicles. So it can be done. You can do a vasectomy in a male dog. Um, but the problem with that is you can still have some of these sexual you know, characteristics and behaviors that are, are really we're trying to avoid. It is interesting because... When a woman typically, and this is going to be somewhat stereotypic, a woman brings in her cat or dog to be spayed. You know, they'll give them a big hug before we take them back to our treatment area and go, okay, honey, see you later. And it's fine. But sometimes tell when a man is bringing in his male dog or cat to be castrated because they're walking with their legs really close together (laughs) and they seem to be afraid. It's like, no, 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 really. You get to keep yours. I only want your pets. And they have this feeling like, oh my goodness, if it doesn't go out and that male doesn't have a chance to feel what manhood is like, it's going to cause a real psychological problem for this pet. And Dr. Speck, you're a man. Tell me your opinion on this. Well, that was a reason to, you know, the time to stay and neuter animals has kind of evolved. Initially, it was, you know, let's let them wait and have a a litter first, or let's stay after the first heat. But now, all those psychological reasons, you know, not to stay or neuter an animal have kind of all been debunked. So now, now we're just looking at what is best medically and what is best for population control. So if you neuter a dog or a cat, before they have come into um, sexual maturity, then all those behavior problems, which are significant and can be the reason for relinquishment, um, those are, are really a lot less likely. So it's what should be done. And there's been enough research into this area now that there, there's really no question about that. And the long-term ramifications seem to be quite minimal health-wise. Esther, what are some of the myths that you've had people ask you or questions they've asked you that you've had to debunk some of the myths they uh, are under the impression of? Well, I think the most frequent one is that they're going to get fat or they're going to get lazy, but I think either one of those really doesn't have anything to do with spaying and neutering, really. It has to do with how much exercise the animal gets or how much food they get. That's really the, the main thing that people complain about, worried about in terms of medical outcomes of spaying their animals. That's the one that I always heard. I don't know, if Dr. Speck, if you've heard any other concerns. I haven't. Well, the concerns that have been out there are um, urinary incontinence, you know, um, dribbling urine. Um, Sometimes the female dogs can do that as they get older. And that's when you spay an animal at five to six months, that is, is not a concern at all. Possibly maybe a little bit is a real young dog a real young dog that's spayed, maybe even a little more prone to that. Um, I mean, like as far as, as obesity goes, you know, spaying and neutering maybe will slow the metabolism down a little bit, so um, an animal might be prone to put on some pounds. And also, of course, they, they're they aging all the time, too. But those are things that can be controlled. Urinary incontinence can be controlled. Obesity can be controlled. Any of the other, you know, minor problems that have been brought up, they can be controlled. What cannot be controlled is if we don't do this younger age spay and neuter is um, pet overpopulation. And that's the biggest reason for euthanasia of dogs and cats in the country. It's not medical. It's not hit by car. It's not anything like that. It's, it's overpopulation. 
So, you know, you kind of have to weigh the balance of everything. Well, Dr. Speck, I totally agree with you about the neutering decreasing the metabolism somewhat. And it's so important what I'll typically try and tell my clients when they've brought their pets in to be neutered is that it is no longer the kitten or the puppy, though age-wise it still may be. I've changed some things, so now it's going to be important for you, even before we spayed it, not to have or neutered it, not to have that pet become obese because that overweight puppy or kitten is much more likely to run into weight issues as it gets older. Once it's been neutered, metabolism changes, its hormonal structure changes, so they can be more prone. Stop feeding it as though it's that growing puppy. You may want to change it to the adult food, watch its weight, keep it healthy, and that's so important. Dr. Speck, here's a question for you. How old is too old to spay or neuter that pet? Well, you know, I've always been told and I believe that age is not a disease. So it just depends on the physical condition of the animal. Um, We do not set an age limit on any animal we spay or neuter here. It just depends on how their physical exam goes. Because some of these dogs, they can still come into heat at 12, 13, 14 years of age. It's surprising. They can start at five months and they don't quit until they're 14 years old. And the surgeries, the procedures are so quick. You know, they're up and down very quickly. And some of the older animals, you know, we will maybe give them some fluids to um, compensate for things and maybe do a little blood work ahead of time to make sure that they are in good shape. But there's no impediment to doing an older animal. But I will say this, it's a lot easier and quicker to spay the puppies and kittens than it is the older animals. That's another reason that they should be done at an early age. Well, Esther Meckler and Dr. Richard Speck, thank you both very much for being with us today. Try to avoid those accidents whenever possible. Get those puppies and kittens into your veterinarian at that early age before they have a chance to start thinking about being a little wild in that backyard and um, the problems that are associated with it, such as pet overpopulation and the health issues for your pet. So thank you both very much for being with me today. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much, and thanks for having us. Thank you, Dr. Speck. do appreciate it. You've been listening to Dr. Bernadine Cruz. I'm the Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio. Please tune in again next week. We'll have more information on how to make you the best possible pet owner you can be. Thanks for listening. Pets can be a wonderful addition to your life because they're a member of the family. Keeping them healthy and happy is important. Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor with veterinary media consultant and veterinarian Dr. Bernadine Cruz. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile, or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets. The Pet Doctor, on demand every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com.